Welcome to Comedy by Indie Drop-In. Each week, we feature an episode from the best independent creators. Hit subscribe for more great comedy content. If you would like to support Indie Drop-In and get these episodes ad-free, check out our Patreon at the bottom of the show notes. Today's episode is from The Wonder Women. Don't forget to check out the show notes for links to subscribe and follow on social media. Enjoy the show. Begin. This just in. Breaking wind news. Reports from around the world are coming in that humans have lost the ability to fart. You've heard correctly. Humans can no longer pass gas. Let's go to our field reporter, who is reporting live from the Windy City. Crapton Thunderpants, can you hear us? Yes, yes I can, Flatulist. Hang on to your pearls, folks. Many here have reported sightings of floating children, and hospitals are reportedly overwhelmed with cases of exploding intestines. It's too soon to know the entirety of the situation, but we can be certain prude mothers around the country are celebrating this one as a victory. Reporting live from the Windy City, I'm Crapton Thunderpants. Many thanks, Crapton. Ghastly news indeed. We're waiting on an official statement from the White House, and we'll keep you posted as the story develops. I'm the Flatulist, and you heard it here first from Down Under Network. The world is a weird place. But what if it was even weirder? Join us, the Wonder Women, as we explore the serious answers to your wackiest questions. Questions like, what if the ocean wasn't salty? What if clouds were ice cubes? And what if farts were a harvestable energy source? Each week, we'll wonder what if, and in the process, we'll find out what really is. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Wonder Women. I'm Crapton Thunderpants. And I'm the Flatulist. And today we're wondering, what would the world be like if we couldn't fart? Hmm. All right, Crapton, tell me about farts. <laughs> What's your most embarrassing fart story? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even ready for this. I have to think about it. Mm. Okay. What's your most embarrassing <laughs> fart story? I don't think I have an embarrassing fart story. I think I've gone through life relatively unscathed in the fart department. Although I ha I do remember in the department. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. I do remember my dad lighting his farts on fire when we were a kid. Whoa. That's a sight to see. It actually worked. It actually it actually <laughs> oh, worked. <God>. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real thing. I've never tried it myself, but it was a demonstration that wow. I will never forget. Yeah, I don't think I've ever... I've always been really afraid to fart in front of people. Mm. So I don't think I have a story. I peed in front of my whole class <laughs> in oh, kindergarten. No. <laughs> That's worse than farting. Yeah, so unrelated. Yeah, yeah. Well, sort of related. Sort of related, mm. yeah. Well. Wow. Yeah, it was Helen Keller Day. <laughs> <laughs> and I was chosen to give the weather report for the day. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to sign language it. And, <laughs> and I needed the bathroom. <laughs> and I didn't know how to sign language that I needed the bathroom. So I just stood in front of the whole class. <laughs> 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 we can cut that out. It's unrelated to far. No, we have to keep it. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I did hear, I did read a cute story about a deaf a teacher of a deaf student who had to explain to her deaf student that hearing people could hear farts. Oh. So the little girl farted in class and everyone turned to look at her and she didn't know why anybody was looking at her. So the teacher had to explain hearing people can hear farts and it was a revelation. Wow. For this little girl. <laughs> so that was pretty cute. Yeah. I never thought about that. So there's some teachable moments with farts, which hopefully we'll have plenty of those today. Yes, we definitely will and also just doing an internet search about farts some funny things just show up like in the drop down selection menu. <laughs> uh, some of my favorites were farts in a jar oh what are fartlets <laughs> i still don't what know is a fartlet? <laughs> uh, some another one was farts are just boneless poop which is an interesting thought oh yeah and farts are liberty so people are searching for some weird things wow who knew that you could get so philosophical when it comes to farts right okay crafton i have a challenge for you okay okay 
Let's see who can name the most fart words. The most names for farts. Oh, okay. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Break wind. Ventosis. Ass acoustics. <laughs> Air biscuit. Rip. Exhume the dinner corpse. <laughs> Body booty bomb. Steam press your Calvins. <laughs> Butt bongos. Butt bazooka. Butt trumpet. Petarod. Cheek squeak. Oh, I'm out. I'm Colin Bolin. <laughs> I've got plenty more. I was ready for this one. <laughs> That's great. You were more ready than me. Yeah. Uh, a petarade is an interesting one. I think it is maybe a French word, um, but it means a series of farts. Oh. So it's actually useful um, if you need a word for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really applicable. Yeah. Maybe that should take us to what different types of farts there are. So actually, Jonathan Swift answered this question for us <laughs> in his no. famous, he wrote a brochure a little pamphlet called The Benefits of Farting. And so he laid out, I take it there are five or six different species of fart. The sonorous and full-toned or rousing fart. (laughs) The double fart. The soft and fizzing fart. Fizzing? (laughs) The wet fart. And the sullen windbound fart. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have audio clips of these? No, unfortunately I don't. But according to at least one famous thinker, that's the typology of farts. That's useful to know. Yeah. I wonder if we've not gotten a bit ahead of ourselves here. So let's first step back. What is a fart? What counts as a fart? Um, Well, according to me, (laughs) (laughs) the authority on farting and my what I found about the definition of a fart, it's basically just a buildup of gas expelled from the anus. Mm. Yeah. Uh, What type of gas? Um, I, I read that it's mostly that it's a mix of things, uh, like nitrogen and hydrogen and carbon dioxide, Mm -hmm. but the smelly parts are methane and sulfur. Yeah. That's what I got too. Let's talk about the difference between a burp and a fart. I would love to know. (laughs) So obviously the big one is they come from different, (laughs) different ends of your body. Hopefully. In an ideal world, (laughs) but it's also based on where the gas comes from. So For both a fart and a burp, it can often be air that you swallow. So not only is it gas that your body produces, but sometimes it's just extra air that you get if you eat too fast or you inhale too much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you're really gassy, maybe you should slow down and take deep breaths while you eat, but not while you're eating. But so a fart usually comes from the large intestine. So once the food gets past the small intestine and it starts to ferment in the large intestine, that's where the farts come from. And usually those are the smelly ones. Burps are just air or sometimes they're gas up from the small intestine. So different composition, different parts of the body, and burps are usually less smelly. Oh, interesting. Thankfully. So, but farting overall is actually perfectly healthy. It's a perfectly normal bodily function. And actually, if you don't fart, that's a problem for your health. So even though it's really embarrassing for everybody, farting is actually a good thing. Yeah. Why is it so embarrassing? I don't know, but let's talk about that. (laughs) Okay. First, true or false question. Okay. Okay. Fart sounds come from your butt cheeks flapping. Definitely true. False. What? (laughs) That's a myth. No way. Yeah. That's disappointing. The sound of the fart is determined by the expulsion velocity as well as the shape and size of the anal sphincter at the moment of the fart. So the opening size can change. And so depending on... The size of that opening and how fast the gas is actually going through. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, that determines the fart. And that's why every fart is different, like a snowflake. Oh, farts are like snowflakes. <laughs> Takeaway number one from this episode <laughs> farts are like snowflakes. Yeah, they are. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, okay, here's also another interesting question Can you fart in space? Yes. Yes, you can fart because, right, we just, we have to if we have gas moving through our bodies. But if you fart in zero G, it's actually pretty dangerous. Uh, what? <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Wow. Right, so there's no convection in space, meaning that, like, the the cool air doesn't sink, the hot air doesn't rise. So normally, like, we know somebody has farted because the smell rises right. and it gets to our nose. Oh. But if it doesn't, then the gas is just hanging out right around you. So in space, you could actually, technically, you could suffocate in your own fart. Oh, my God. Right. That has got there's to be the to worst way it. to die. Yeah. And also, like, the hydrogen and methane coming out in your fart are fire hazards. 
<laughs> well, that's why my dad could light his farts on fire. Yeah, We've exactly. So in circle. space, that's pretty dangerous. Wow. That's crazy. So they probably have to train astronauts how not to fart. Yeah, I don't know what they do. Well, actually, I bet what they did is read the WikiHow article on how to hold in a fart. Oh. So if you have <laughs> fart problems, even though generally you shouldn't because farting is healthy, there's an entire Wiki WikiHow article on how to hold in a fart. Do you have a summary for us? Uh, well, there's lots of different techniques. Um, Pro tips. One is to squeeze your butt cheeks together, so make sure that there's no opening for a fart to get out. <laughs> they also teach you some techniques about crop dusting if you absolutely have to fart. So yeah, it's what do you mean by useful. crop dusting? Do you know what crop dusting is? I in biology terms. <laughs> so crop dusting is where you walk and fart at the same time so that the gas is distributed over space so that oh. it's less likely that someone can pinpoint you as the farter. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> but we all what do it. Image. I mean, we fart 10 to 20 times a day is what I read, which mm -hmm. is about two liters worth of farts. So think of a giant Pepsi bottle. You could fill that much space with your farts in a day on average. Yeah, I read similarly that the average fart is between the size of a bottle of nail polish and oh. a can of soda. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty big. Which made me really start to think... I did kind of trying to do a tracking over how many, over a few days, like how often do I fart in a day? <laughs> and I honestly don't feel like it's 10 to 20, so they must kind of just be all while I'm sleeping. That must be like where I make up some fart ground. I'm sleeping, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Well, I decided to just use some math and not track myself. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, one way of doing it. <laughs> just for the drama of it, let's assume that one fart is the size of a can of soda and you're maxing out at like 21 times a day. That's more than two gallons a day. Whoa. Volume wise. Can you imagine like two extra volumes, two extra <laughs> gallons That's crazy. in your body? Yeah, yeah. That you're getting rid of every day. Wow. I also, just the thought, because they, I actually read, and I didn't read a lot of detail, of studies they've done to try and test the content of farts and, like, measure the content of farts. So what they mm -hmm. did is they had test subjects actually wear some sort of device throughout the day that captures farts. Yeah, like a farts. catheter. Yeah, mm -hmm. which just the fact that such an invention existed is I know. horrific to me. <laughs> Speaking of inventions, I want to share with you a few fart-related inventions <laughs> <laughs> that I dug up. So yes. farts have spawned innovation over the years. Um there's one, obviously, like how you catch your farts, ways of doing that. There's charcoal lined underwear where oh the charcoal gosh. kind of captures the smell. And like, so if you're a really stinky farter all the time, you can wear charcoal lined underwear to help wow. you mitigate that smell. How expensive is that? I didn't look it up because I'm... <laughs> Logan. Didn't feel a need. I didn't want that in my internet search history. <laughs> Although I have plenty of other fart stuff in my search history at this point. Another thing, if you feel your farts are too smelly, is a scientist invented a pill that if you swallow it will make your farts smell like chocolate. Wow. Yeah. So there's all sorts of ways to make your farts less smelly. But my favorite fart-related invention is... An inventor, and you can find this video on YouTube or the Daily News, who invented a device to fart on France from England. <laughs> so he built this giant butt with a giant, I guess, fart cannon and took it down to the Dover Cliffs and farted on France successfully. No way. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. Is that there for public use? No, it was a one time thing. Oh. Yeah. I don't think the, <laughs> the queen would not approve. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, it's also funny that you say somebody came up with something that makes farts smell like chocolate because Benjamin Franklin actually was interested in that same concept uh way back in his day. When was that? The 1700s? I don't know. <laughs> But he wrote a letter entitled Fart Proudly mm. to the Royal Academy of Brussels, which at the time was Respect. one of Europe's most respected <laughs> scientific academies. That's why Europeans still don't take Americans seriously <laughs> to this day. <laughs> well, it was, it was really just a sarcastic letter, but he was frustrated on how philosophical everything that the academy was producing uh, was. So he was kind of upset that it didn't it didn't relate to people's everyday lives like there's nothing usable coming out of the academy so he wrote this sarcastic commentary urging them to research something more practical like finding a way to make farts smell good even that they could be used like a perfume oh yeah wow and 
He's here we years have it. Later. Now there are chocolate farts. Ben Franklin, we finally fulfilled your wish. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so weird. So maybe it's a good time to share a little bit more with you what I learned about farts and cultures. I read this really interesting article uh, by a woman named Kirsten Bell, who actually found out that not a lot of anthropologists have explored why it is that farts are so reviled across cultures. It's probably hard to get funding yeah. for that. <laughs> right, I guess so. But there's a few examples throughout history. There's kind of some anthropologists that she cite that mentioned in some Latin American indigenous cultures or in South American indigenous cultures that this it's kind of considered a rotten smell. And so anytime someone farts in public, everyone has to like hack and spit to get the taste of the fart out of their mouth. I mean, sometimes I want to do that. Like when somebody (laughs) farts on the train. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And there's also, you know, one source that she thought was somewhat dubious about if you farted in a mosque in, Morocco that they put little stones where the fart happened to try and capture any evil spirits that may have come (laughs) out of the fart so farts have been associated with evil spirits with the devil throughout history in some some places are definitely pure evil (laughs) (laughs) yeah you can see how that would how that would be an inference Uh, that's funny Uh, did you happen to come across the Japanese fart scrolls no (laughs) I saw a picture but I didn't read anything about it okay these are amazing they're from Japan's Edo period and these are beautiful pieces of art that actually they translate from Japanese as the fart war and so they depict men and women literally blowing each other like around the scroll with storm strength farts (laughs) Uh, they're incredible. And they were also used to depict dis- displeasure with European influence coming in. Oh. Yeah. So it's kind of this like, like way to like. Political express, statement. Yeah. It's a yeah. political statement through farts. Um, but they're beautiful <laughs> pieces of work. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So uh, everyone should go check that out hmm. for sure. Also in this article that I read is trying to explore why it is we find farts so offensive, even though mm. they're so human. To fart is human, one could say. Right. And some people speculate that the thing is it's you can't really defend yourself or get away from it. It's so invasive, uniquely invasive in the way that other bodily emissions aren't necessarily like blood or urine or poop. Those are things that stay in place and you can kind of avoid them. (laughs) But the fact that you (laughs) that a fart really permeates the air is maybe part of the reason that we think it's so so like such a such an affront Hmm. to us. But I did find that there have been times throughout history that farts have been celebrated. Oh. Did you turn up any research about Le Petoman? No. So Le Petoman <laughs> was a French flatulist. He was a performer in the Moulin Rouge who was known for his ability to control his farts <laughs> to great hilarity among his audience. Wow. It's actually interesting that when you asked, can we burp out of our butts? Well, actually, <laughs> he kind of did that because the way he his he had such control over his sphincter that he sucked in air through his butt and then was able to fart it out yeah he was the highest strongest sphincter yeah he was the highest paid performer of his time (laughs) (laughs) so he was definitely celebrated for his ability to fart that's amazing it's like when people can burp the alphabet right he could probably fart the alphabet he did it to music he would smoke a cigar it was in it was by all accounts an incredible (laughs) performance and you can see why he was so highly paid wow but the thing is because he was sucking up air rather than using like it being from gas of his body his farts didn't actually smell and so maybe that's part of the reason why his farts were funny and not offensive because they didn't actually stink up the entire theater that's incredible do people still do that today is that an art well anywhere not that i've seen but maybe wow i can't do it i wonder what you could bring in today with that (laughs) so i have one last thing there's another way that the french have celebrated farts Mm -hmm. and i actually have a surprise for you did you bring a french person here (laughs) no but i made a treat this is called a nun's fart (laughs) (laughs) this is basically if you took a cream puff and you deep fried it and instead of filling it with cream you rolled it in orange sugar okay so i have for you a french pastry known as a nun's fart wow take a bite see what you think is it gonna make a fart sound <laughs> no. <laughs> but these are actually pretty complicated to make and also they're a bit soggy in my transport but these are actually really hard and so i'm waiting for the next great british bake-off episode where nuns farts are a featured technical challenge this is delicious oh 
Wait, why are very they airy nuns farts? So, the story goes that a nun was cooking, and she farted, and everyone laughed at her, and see, she was so surprised at everyone laughing that she dropped the puff of pastry conveniently in her hand in a conveniently located pot of boiling oil. And thus, the nun's fart was born. Wow. No. Well, something else we owe to farts. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Uh, speaking of people who shouldn't be farting but are caught <laughs> farting, uh, Mark Twain actually has a really funny piece of work from 1880 called The 1601 Conversation as It Was by the Social Fireside in the Time of the Tudors. <laughs> the Tudors? I know. I e T O O T E R S? No, T U D O R S. <laughs> Missed opportunity, Mark yeah. Twain. <laughs> yeah, did you find this in your research? I I found a little bit about farts in literature more broadly. So do you want to talk more about Mark Twain? Yeah, okay. I will. Uh, so this is really funny. He is one of my favorite authors anyway, but this is written as an extract from the diary of one of Queen Elizabeth's the first ladies in waiting. <laughs> Um, who's just like listening in on the queen's conversations and several other famous writers of the day and it's just this like comedically vulgar piece Mm -hmm. for the time so yeah it covers things like flatulence and sex um and it was actually found so vulgar (laughs) not together (laughs) (laughs) depending on what you're into (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I can't comment on that. Uh, But it was found so vulgar that the publication wasn't actually considered printable until the 1960s. Wow. Yeah, so it was kind of just passed around on the side, on the sly, I don't know, Mm. until then. Um, So in it, someone observes uh, that someone has passed gas. And I'll just read you a quote. It's written in like a pseudo old English. Um, and so I'll <laughs> I'm just gonna change my accent. Here. Do it. Put us in oh, the zone. So weird. <laughs> in ye heat of ye talk, it befets ye t- one did break wind, yielding an exceeding mighty and distressful stink, whereat all did laugh full sore, and then the queen looks for the source, and Lady Alice replies. Good, your grace, and I had room for such a thunder gust within mine ancient bowels. Tis not in reason I could discharge ye same, and live to thank God for it. He did choose handmaid so humble, whereby to she is power. <laughs> Nay, tis not I ye to have brought forth this rich or mastering fog, this fragrant gloom, so pray you seek ye further. <laughs> Uh, So the queen is essentially, she's the one who farted, and she's trying Ah. to kind of, like, place blame, asking other people, like, oh, my Mm -hmm. goodness, who farted? Did you? She who smelt it, dealt it. Yeah. So actually, it's funny that you mentioned farts and jokes and fart humor, because the world's first recorded joke is actually a fart joke. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? I had no idea. So an ancient Sumerian joke, which is the first recorded joke that we have, (laughs) goes like this. Something which has never occurred since time immemorial. A young woman did not fart in her husband's lap. (laughs) There we have it. So without farts, we clearly wouldn't have some of the world's oldest humor. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been, it's humor as old as time. Yeah. So farts have this really interesting cultural role in society throughout history, but that no one ever talks about. So farts have this silent but deadly role in history (laughs) for people. (laughs) Ah. Oh. Yes, there's plenty more where that came uh, from. <laughs> the flatulist has done it. <laughs> My power move. Well, so talking about all of these people farting also got me wondering, do animals fart? Mm. And what does that help us learn about how people fart? Uh, there's a really funny book called Does It Fart? The Definitive Field Guide yep. to Animal Flatulence. I saw that too. Yeah, and yeah. it's just full of animals that fart or don't fart and... Uh, some cool ones. Snakes actually fart, which I thought was interesting, as do millipedes and termites mm. supposedly fart a ton. Wow. And there's also a fish called the bolson pupfish. Uh, so it eats this algae all the time, um, but especially in the summer when it blooms in the heat. And the algae produces a lot of gas inside the fish, and it makes them float. Oh. And so they have to fart so that they can sink. Otherwise, they're prey for birds to just pick them up off the water. You know, manatees do this, too. 
manatees holding their farts to float. And actually what they've said is that if you see a manatee on the surface who looks like it's struggling, it's actually because it can't fart so that it can dive. Wow. Yeah. I also learned that herringfish fart, but it's a form of communication among themselves. So they use fart <laughs> to help them find each other. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. And we know there's monkeys who fart, and some scientists have seen some monkeys eat charcoal to help mitigate the scent of their farts because they eat leaves. That oh, causes so really horrible smart. gas. And obviously cows fart because cows farts are causing global warming, as mm-hmm. we all know. And I watched a video of an iguana fart. <laughs> it How was, was that <laughs> huge. It was surprisingly a big fart for this iguana. It was in a bathtub, so you can see like the tremendous air bubble. Wow. That this iguana emitted. That's yeah. amazing. Interestingly, sloths don't fart. Oh. Yeah. They actually digest things so slowly that the gases that are made can just be absorbed into their bloodstream because I think all of us mm. as humans, we absorb a little bit of the gases we make, but all of the extra gets expelled so they're digesting so slowly they don't wow. have to rely on that that's great mm-hmm. uh something else i came across um after you have to fart after you have a major abdominal surgery mm. before you will be discharged from the hospital uh so like a c-section you have you're forced to fart first and that's because sometimes these major abdominal surgeries can disrupt peristalsis which is the process it's like these waves vibrating down our bodies of the involuntary muscles that we have in our digestive system Whoa. and that's like the movement the downward movement that brings food and everything from our mouths down and out through our anuses wow. yeah so if you can't fart then that's like a sign to the doctors that your digestive system has been disrupted and which can be really dangerous so they, wow. you have to stay there until you can fart interesting and if you ever are like with a colonoscopy also yeah. yeah and if you ever find yourself in that situation you can chew gum after surgery for like 30 minutes mm. and it's a way to get kind of like your muscle memory into working again and get your digestive juices flowing i've also heard that chewing gum can lead to gas because of what we talked about with the air coming in swallowing yeah mm. huh. That's a whole bunch of information about farts. I think that sets up so really sets us up really well to talk about what the world would be like if we couldn't fart. Yeah. So let's maybe take a quick break and then jump into the answer to our question. Okay. Love the Wonder Women? Well, you'll love Down Under Network's new show, The Great Baking Brits. Here's a sneak peek at next week's episode. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back. Today we've asked our bakers to bake 12 perfectly puffed nun's farts. So named, as the story goes, when an old nun farted while cooking and was so startled by the laughter of her fellow nuns that she dropped the dough she was holding into a conveniently placed pot of hot oil. While these fragrant fluffs may sound like a gas to make, they'll actually be quite difficult for our bakers to squeeze out. Alright, we've talked about Farts and animals. We've talked a lot about farts. (laughs) Farts and history. Farts and culture. Fart anatomy. What does it all mean if we couldn't fart? Right. So, like we said, people fart 10 to 20 times a day. That's about two gallons worth of farts at our peak farting (laughs) as as you did the mouth. So, if we couldn't fart, what would happen with all that gas? What would we do? Uh, I've been thinking about this, and I think we might explode. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because like we discussed, people who have abdominal surgery and can't fart, mm. they start to get a lot of pain because their body has to try to absorb and pack away that gas in some places. So we literally might explode. Yeah. So when you were talking about sloths, I actually read sometimes that sloths, they explode. Yeah, their their <laughs> their colon actually ruptures, or their abdominal cavity like actually ruptures because they've got so much gas. So I think that would actually wow. be a huge health risk for people, like you say, because there'd be nowhere for it to go. Yeah. Oh, what about okay? When people, do you remember? Okay, every now and then there are stories about people who spontaneously combust. Whoa! What you if you just figured it out? <laughs> 
that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Or maybe they farted too much near like a fire source. I wonder if that link has ever been explored. Mm. That should be an annex. Yeah. A follow up for us. That's interesting. Yeah. So another thing I thought that if gas just stayed stuck in our abdominal cavity, maybe we would float all the time. We'd be more buoyant like you were talking about with the fish. Mm. So which mean like we wouldn't go scuba diving. We wouldn't be able to go scuba diving because we wouldn't be able to sing. (laughs) And also things like pearl diving. So we wouldn't have pearl industry if we couldn't fart. I'm pretty sure of that. So the next time you see your grandma wear some pearls, just tell her that she should be grateful to farts. Wow. For that. That is definitely not a connection I had made. <laughs> but that's really interesting. And on top of that, think about the size of doorways. We'd need clearance, oh. floating clearance. Yeah. Um, yep. How would you sit in an airplane? That's right. Or you know, any actually, chair flying would matter. probably be a huge risk for people because we'd have so much gas that the pressure would be a big problem. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. too. I also was thinking if we have all of this gas that is collecting inside of our bodies, What if our bodies evolve to absorb more? Like Mm. maybe we'd have expandable pockets where gas could be stored, (laughs) right? (laughs) So instead of, you know, people who had a C-section and have some back pain, instead there's maybe like an extra pocket of skin that can inflate with gas right around your shoulders. Yeah, like fart blisters. And we'd have to like lance it to release the gas. Right. So that actually kind of relates to another idea I had is that Rather than releasing gas throughout the day and like these like mini farts that we'd probably have to wait till it all built up and then it would be a like a big release. Mm. And so that instead of having just a number one and a number two, we'd have a number one, a number two and a number three. We'd have a pee and a poo and a gas release ah. so that you part of your bathroom ritual would be maybe you have to poo, maybe you have to pee, but maybe it's just time for you to squeeze all that gas out. And so maybe there'd be this entire industry about different ways that we could more effectively squeeze that gas out of our bodies, like gas belts, maybe different exercises that we would do in the bathroom. Mm. Maybe our toilets would look totally different because there'd be some sort of device that helped us compress this gas out of our bodies. Yeah. And like ventilation systems to help blow it away. Yeah. From your, oh, you know, from you yourself. imagine walking yeah. into the bathroom just right? for a number one and somebody's just done a number right? three? <laughs> well, it's bad enough trying to like go to the bathroom discreetly as it is now, like when you're like when you have to poo. But like imagine <laughs> when it's time to expel this giant fart. Yeah. It's like a whoopee cushion or a balloon deflating. Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so. And gross. <laughs> it was really gross. Uh, well, on, But it's was, better than exploding. True. Yeah. And I was wondering what ways we might expel a bunch of gas at mm. once. Like, what if we had really large pores or pores that can Ooh. open really big yeah. to let all the gas just go? So it wasn't just, oh. right? <laughs> How weird That's would that crazy. be? <laughs> because actually, what I wanted to know is, does gas come out of your pores? And actually, if we didn't fart, it's possible that we would just smell like farts more frequently. So it is been proven so that it is a thing that if you're constipated you can start to smell like poop because the gas that builds up because you can't release anything from your colon actually gets like reabsorbed into your body or it's like gets sweated out but there's some way that you actually can start smelling like poop if you're constipated wow and so i think it stands to reason that if we couldn't fart it would come out of our pores and we'd maybe we'd have expandable pores but also maybe we would just go around smelling like poop more frequently Wow, that could totally change the perfume industry. Yeah. Or maybe it would change the smells we're attracted to. Oh, Ooh. that's really interesting. Yeah. Or it comes back to Ben Franklin's idea where we would have to have innovated a lot sooner about trying to find that chocolate pill that makes us, that makes fart smell like chocolate because otherwise our body would, order would be untenable. Why chocolate? It's so weird. I know. <laughs> Better than, I guess, sulfur. Yeah. But another thing that struck me is... The food that causes farts to be stinky are the sulfur foods, like you Mm -hmm. said way at the beginning. And so maybe we would have thought that food was so offensive in terms of making us smell bad that we would have assumed it was somehow toxic to us. Right. Which means our entire diet might have cut out things like Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, beans, broccoli, and a lot of dairy. It might be that we just assumed that was toxic food to us and it was just not a thing that people ate. Yeah. And this also answers the, the question why vegans and vegetarians have smellier farts because they eat the food that most commonly produces the stinky gas. Yeah. You I feel very <laughs> satisfied <laughs> at having found the answer to that. 
Yeah. That's so our, to- our entire diet would potentially be different if we couldn't fart. Mm-hmm. And the pearl industry. Don't forget that. Right. <laughs> Most importantly, what we're all thinking about yeah. is pearls are very in even to this day. <laughs> Another thing, I think the last kind of thing, where would farts go if we couldn't fart is our mouth. And actually, mm. that's not unprecedented. Um, furps. Fart furps. Or like fart. Yeah. Which if we... So is it that we would have two different kinds of burps that we would differentiate between like an air burp or like a small intestine burp and a fart burp? Mm. Because also think about how horrid it would be if 10 to 20 times a day you burped a burp that smelled like a fart. That's disgusting. Yeah. Think about the taste. Right? So I think the mint industry would take off. It'd be huge. Like no one would be able to go anywhere without like a Listerine strip or a mint. Yeah. Or maybe a bag that you have to catch your deep burps in. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you tie them up and that's a balloon. Uh, (laughs) Related to a thought that I had. Instead of blowing into balloons, we'd burp into them. Exactly. And what if this could uh, solve the helium shortage? There's a global helium shortage. Yeah, there actually is. And farts we talked about how those gases are lighter than air we could flow we could also solve the global helium shortage and maybe we'd transport in hot air balloons or zeppelins yeah could bring the zeppelin back bring it back Mm -hmm. wow yeah that's crazy Uh, Another thought I had thinking about sloths and how their digestion is so slow maybe we would just have Mm. to slow down our digestion if we can't produce gas if that would be if we don't have a way to get rid of it then we would have to digest really slowly uh so everything else would slow down too for us like maybe we would grow moss on our backs because our metabolism would be slower right if we digested more slowly yeah that's what that would impact right and so think about history we could be like set back millennia if Mm. we had been going at the pace of sloths wow because our brains probably wouldn't get nutrition at the same rate that we've gotten them like isn't Wow, that's really yeah. That's really like something. What if the pyramids were halfway built by now? Just because, <laughs> just because we couldn't, because we couldn't fart. That's yeah. really incredible. So it's you know it makes you really wonder why is it that so many people revile and make fun of farts and are ashamed of them when really, it's so important for our society. I mean, just be grateful that you don't fart out of your mouth. Think of how hard it would be to get a date. Yeah. Or if you smelled like poop. Oh, man. Making out and you have a... Oh, no. <laughs> uh, it's uh, definitely happened. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> In history, I'm sure, sure. it's happened. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> okay, Crafton. <laughs> mm. um, I don't know if you have any more thoughts on that. There's only one that I have is... I think coming back to sphincters and farts is that... Yes, back to sphincters. It all comes back to sphincters every time. As it should. (laughs) So when we fart, our sphincter relaxes. And so if we couldn't fart, maybe part of that would mean is that our sphincter couldn't relax. So we'd get sphincter cramps. Can you imagine Mm. how uncomfortable it would be to get a sphincter cramp? Or maybe we wouldn't have sphincters. Like, would we be able to poop if we couldn't fart? Because, like, presumably, since we have an egress out of our butt for poop, that's where fart could come out of well, unless our sphincter was always clenched so tight i read that birds can't fart oh and they, so they don't of, explode yeah and they kind of just have a hole where everything falls out and so maybe things would just sort of fall yeah. out in a gloppy mess instead oh. of the more controlled systematic yeah or maybe we would just we like constantly like Submit a steady stream of gas. Mm. Like we just wouldn't stop farting. It would just be one long, steady stream of gas emission. Maybe. And in that case, it probably wouldn't be embarrassing or yeah. even noticeable. We would just be accustomed yeah. to that happening. Yeah. Uh, a final thought I had was if we couldn't fart, could we become celestial bodies? What? Because <laughs> stars are just luminous balls of gas. Oh. Right? Okay. Is there a chance that stars are just people who couldn't fart? Uh, yes. <laughs> I want to believe that so badly. <laughs> we need to end there because there's no thought that transcends that. <laughs> stars are people who couldn't fart. <laughs> so when we say you're a star, we could literally mean it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> That's great. Well, 
I think we should wrap it up there. That's a great place to end. Yeah, I think um, we've thoroughly explored every nook and cranny of <laughs> what would happen if we could not fart. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that wraps up our wonder. Well done, Crapped in Thunderpants. Well done, the flatulist. <laughs> <laughs> Just a disclaimer for everyone listening, this is not actual science. We do do our research, but in terms of what we wonder, that's just interpretation of what might happen based on a kernel of actual science. So for all those of you who are scientists out there, you can write us, but please don't be angry. We're just imagining things. Yeah. And we just want you to imagine, too. Damn it. <laughs> Use your imagination. Why can't we all just imagine? <laughs> we should all be incredibly thankful for farting. And as Benjamin Franklin said, we should fart proudly. And he also said, he that lives upon hope <laughs> dies farting. Thanks so much Wise to words. our producer, Master Blaster, and Tina Tudor, who provided this week's music. <laughs> and thank you for joining us today. That's all for now. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> farts, farts, farts. Did you get that? <laughs> Join us next time on The Wonder Women, where we'll explore wonders like what if animals could cry? What if baby hippos grew in our gardens? What if we could see farts? Until then, keep wondering. Thanks again for listening to Comedy by Indie Drop-In. If you would like your show featured, reach out to us at Indie Drop-In on all social media or go to IndieDropIn.com. See you next time.